Lord, you've put fire in my belly. You put a word in my mouth. You put a prophetic utterance on the inside of me. So I declare right now in the name of Jesus that your word shall come from me, from, from me, as you have ordained. Oh, we bless your name. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 24. The book of Genesis chapter 24, reading from verse 7 to 9. Book of Genesis chapter 24, reading from verse 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land. He shall send his angel before you. And you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you shall be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his head under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. He will send his angel before you. There is a realm of the anointing that shall be opened unto you. There is a dimension of faith that shall come unto you. There is a revelation that shall enter into your heart. For there are things that you must enter in, in the realm of relationships. For there is a God above who is a matchmaker. There is a God above who is a divine connector. And there are angels in the heavens whose assignment is for the connecting of divine relationships. And so we see in the scripture that Abraham, the servant of the Lord, that Abraham, the prophet of the Lord, must now facilitate the choosing of a wife for his son Isaac because the anointing must now be transferred from Abraham to Isaac. That is why in the word you hear, it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob because the mantle of the anointing that rested upon Abraham was transferred to Isaac, that it was transferred to Jacob. So the choice of the wife of Isaac would be critical because it was God Almighty who chose Sarah because both Sarah and both Abraham were called so this cannot be an ordinary woman that must be chosen for Isaac for the Bible says that Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham and Sarai's name was changed from Sarai to Sarah because Abraham was called the father of nations but also Sarah was called the mother of nations that means Abraham had an anointing to father nations and the Bible says that Sarah had an anointing to mother nations so they were not unequally yoked. Abraham didn't have an anointing and Sarah did not have an anointing. Sarah did not have an anointing and Abraham did have an anointing. So this was a divine choice that had to be made. This was a divine decision that had to be made and there was an angel there was an angel that Abraham was now going to release. He was going to send his servant but when he was sending his servant he said the Lord God would send an angel and this angel will bring you to the wife for Isaac and the spirit of God spoke to me and said today I want you to release the angel for divine connections because there is an angel that will connect you to your relationships for their relationships that are required for men and women under the sound of my voice to step into the place that God has for you their relationships that are required for you to become who God has who God has ordained for you but until you are connected to those relationships your destiny will not happen because those relationships many times are not even in the field of your focus so he said, I shall say, 
send. He shall send his angel. If some of you do not have angels divinely connect you, your destiny will never happen. Your destiny shall never happen. So there are destinies that must now be unfolded. For so there are destinies that must now be released into higher levels of operation. There are people's lives who now must be transformed because of the power of God. Because of the choosing of divine relationships. And so the Lord spoke to me. He said, just as devils connect people, so do angels connect people. For there are people that you have met that were orchestrated by devils. For they were people who came into your life who were soul ties you love their soul but they connected you to a curse just like Jonah connected Jonah connected the man and the woman on that sheep to a curse oh Balaam connected oh Moab to a curse and even so there are people who connect you to a curse because they are connected to a curse they come with a curse and you must disconnect from them but I speak to you that just as there are men and women who connect you to a curse even so there are men and women who connect you to the blessings of God they connect you to the agenda of heaven they connect you to the things that God has planned for your life so there is a connection in the spirit there's a connection in the spirit there's a connection you must you must find your connections for if you do not find your connections you will die in oblivion you will die in oblivion so there are connections. There are connections that you cannot connect yourself. And I see that the angel of the Lord shall come and shall move in people's lives. And some of you shall even know the day that you go to meet a divine connection. For the word of the Lord will come unto you, and you shall be told in your spirit that I shall be connected with somebody today. You shall perceive in your spirit that I shall be connected with you today. And also, the day will come when the anointing shall so increase upon you, and you will know that Satan will send someone into your life today. I remember Remember where there's a time when my wife and I were praying and I was caught up in a vision and I described somebody that she, I said, Satan is going to send this person. I described them and the person came. Sent by Satan. I described the exact person, what the person looked like. Oh, Mambo So you must get this. You must understand this. That they are angels. And so the Lord spoke to me. He said, there are divine connections that I want to bring to my people. There are divine connections that I want to release to them. There are divine connections. And he said, they have to be faithful. He says, I want to give my people, I want to give the faithful people, I want to give them Isaac and Rebecca connections. So if you're under the sound of my voice uh, and you are not married, I've got to tell you something. I, will, I am prophesying to you right now that if you become somebody who can manage a relationship, because this, here's the thing God spoke to me. He said, you must tell the people that I will not give them relationships that they cannot manage. So you must understand that you must be somebody who can manage a relationship. You cannot be somebody who messes every relationship because God can give you something divine and you mess it up oh but I'm here to prophesy to you that God is about to do something because I hear the sound in my spirit and God said tell the people that I will bring unto the faithful those that are able to manage relationships I shall bring Isaac and Rebecca connections somebody's Rebecca is coming oh glory I say someone's Isaac Isaac is coming. Hallelujah. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that just as the angel of the Lord divine
divinely connected Rebecca and Isaac so I prophesy that you shall get a divine connection you shall wake up one morning and the Holy Ghost will tell you you shall meet Rebecca today I prophesy all that you shall wake up one morning and the Holy Ghost shall tell you that you shall meet Isaac today because there's an Isaac for you there's a son of promise there's a man with an anointing there's a Rebecca for you there's a Rebecca with an anointing there's a Rebecca with a promise in the spirit and God shall divinely connect you in the name of Jesus so I prophesy divine connections in the name of Jesus Isaac and Rebecca shall meet in Jesus name man I've got to prophesy some more. Hey, mama, mama, Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to the next prophecy. The next prophecy that he gave me. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Luke chapter 1 verse 35 to 39. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the angel answered and said unto me, The Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One that is to be born shall be called the Son of God. Now indeed, so the angel speaks to Mary, so the angel has spoken to Mary, that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the Son of God shall be released into your womb. And after the angel finished speaking to Mary, the angel is about to connect Mary with somebody who also is pregnant with a baby from the Holy Ghost. You see, when you've got a baby from the Holy Ghost, you can't talk to another woman who doesn't know about getting a baby from the Holy Ghost. So God's got to connect you with somebody that can understand your vision. God's got to connect you with somebody that can understand what's happening in your life. Because when you are divinely endowed by God, sometimes all the friends that Mary had would not have been able to understand her. She could not tell them that an angel came to me and made me pregnant. They will say you are drunk. You have been sleeping with somebody. The friends will become an enemy. So there's some things that God births in you. You can't tell nobody around you. But the angel of the Lord shall connect you to somebody. He shall connect you to your Elizabeth. So the Holy Ghost told me to tell you. Tell them there are going to be some Mary and Elizabeth connections. I'm going to connect you with your Elizabeth. I'm going to connect you with somebody that understands the language of your vision. Somebody that understands the gift in your heart. Somebody that understands what I'm doing on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, my Mary and my Elizabeth connection is coming. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, boy. And this story is not finished. The Bible says, who now indeed Elizabeth was a relative who also had conceived a son in her old age. This is now six months for who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Then, men, then Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary rose up in those days and went into the hill country with haste. Is there a woman in this place? Is there a man in this place that when God speaks to you, you go after it with haste? The Bible says that she didn't take her time. She went for Elizabeth with haste. She headed for Elizabeth with haste. She moved with haste. She was not sluggish about it. She was not slothful about it. But she moved with what? Haste. Move with haste. Move with haste. Mama, 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 Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, 
Oh, hallelujah. And it happened that when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, what's, what's the thing about this story? Is Elizabeth never saw Mary. Mary was, Elizabeth was in the house. Elizabeth was most likely in the room. She was somewhere in the house. But Mary walked through the door and Mary said, Elizabeth, I am here. And the Bible says that when Elizabeth heard the sound of Mary's voice, the baby inside Elizabeth started to jump. Hallelujah. And Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, there are some friends when they come into your life that get you filled with the Holy Ghost. You talk to them on the phone. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. You text them. You get filled with the Holy Ghost because they've got something for you. Oh my God. Shakata Baba. Oh my, 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 my. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Elizabeth started to prophesy. I am telling you, let me tell you, when those two got together, the anointing elevated. Oh Lord, I prophesy that God's going to connect you with a Elizabeth. God's going to connect you with a Elizabeth. That when you speak to her, when you speak to him, the anointing in you shall be elevated. So I see it in my spirit. Mary Elizabeth's relationships are coming. Lift your hands and say, I receive mine now. Lift your hands and say, I receive mine now. Lift my hands and say, I receive mine now. Oh, it's about time. You had a friend that after you speak to the friend, God gives you visions about what you spoke about. God talks to you about what you spoke about. God unfolds. Hallelujah. The friend activates something divine. The conversation is what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Shatata. Whoo. Mana mama mama shatata babasa. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's the second prophecy. Let's go to the third. Mama mama shakara. Oh, can you take some more? Hallelujah. Hey, papa pa shatara babasa. Oh, Lord. He says, who? Oh, my. Let's now go to the book of Ruth. Hmm. One of my favorite books in the Bible. Oh, hallelujah. Ruth chapter 1 from verse 14 to 18. Hallelujah. Then they lifted up their voices and went again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But there was something in Ruth who understood a divine connection. There was something in Ruth who found, who sent something. That this woman is tied to my destiny. This woman might not be perfect. This woman might be depressed. This woman might be sorrowful. But there's something about this woman that I need to stay with her because she understood that people are doors. People are bridges. People are connectors. And she realized that Ruth, Ruth realized that Naomi is a golden connector to me. And even though Naomi said, go back to your gods, she said, I am not going to go back. Hallelujah. He said, I will and, says, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or not to turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will bear it. And the Lord do to me so also. If anything but death separates you and me. When she saw she was determined to go, she stopped speaking to her. You see, what I've got to explain to you is there yes there's some people that come to you for a season but there's some people that are there for life and what happened is that Ruth did discerned that Naomi was there for life she said let me tell you the only thing that's going to separate me and you is what death because I perceive that we are connected to the hip there's an umbilical call of destiny that is connected to me and you 
there's an umbilical cord of destiny that is connected between us and I declare that you shall discover everyone who your umbilical cord of destiny is connected to and what you've got to understand is that when Ruth followed Naomi she followed Naomi back to Bethlehem and Naomi actually encouraged her to go and glean because she was a poor woman and she went to glean the word glean means that they would go to a harvest field and what the people could not harvest they just left it on the ground and this that was what the poor people took and Ruth was one of the poor people but the Bible says that Ruth went and gleaned in the field of a man called Boaz who was the richest man in town he was the richest businessman in town and he was not only rich he was anointed he was not like an only rich man oh who was rich but a rich fool he was not a neighbor this was a Boaz because no Abigail wants a neighbor that is a rich fool but she this was a rich wise man and he was a Boaz and as she followed Ruth as she followed Naomi Naomi taught her and trained her how to get her Boaz you see Naomi is somebody who will connect you to your dream Naomi will mentor you into your destiny Naomi will mentor you into your greatness so I declare unto you that God's about to connect you with Naomi God's about to connect you with somebody who knows how to instruct you to step into your greatness who knows how to instruct you to step into the field of your dream for the day has come for you to step into another level but you need the wisdom of Naomi oh hallelujah without the wisdom of Naomi I tell you Ruth would have stayed poor Ruth did not know that the man liked her Ruth did not know the protocol of how to access the man Ruth did not know how to talk to that caliber of man. Ruth did not understand the culture because sometimes God will put, sometimes your destiny is in an area of industry or in a culture that you're not familiar with. Oh boy, sometimes you're used to the ghetto, but you're going to learn the protocol of the palace. Oh God, I've got to preach to somebody because David, uh, David only understood looking after sheep, but he was called to be a king. So he had to understand the to call of the palace. So Naomi was anointed and chosen by God to teach her the protocol of Boaz, the culture, because Ruth was a Moabite woman. She, she was from a different culture. She was based to a different way of life. She was not used to the culture of the Jews. But Naomi was the link oh boy somebody is going to find a link who naomi is the link oh boy somebody see you got to meet a link up she supper you got to meet a link up what's the link up the link up means here is you come on honey come hold my hand hallelujah that's you that's somebody that's you hallelujah oh come on Sherlin. hallelujah so Sherlin is Sherlin is the dream Sherlin is the boss Children is the destiny, but I am in the middle because I am the link. You see, you need to find the link. I said, you need to find the link. I said, you need to find the link. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. You need to find your link. Hallelujah. You need to find your link. Hallelujah. Who? I heard the Holy Ghost say, I'm hearing it right now in my spirit. He said, my people perish because they actually ignore their links. They ignore their links. Because even though Naomi was her link, Naomi also had some issues. Oh Lord. You see, your, your link, because Naomi was disappointed because her husband had died and her two sons had died. Naomi had some brokenness in her life. So Naomi was not a perfect woman. In fact, Naomi said, do not call my name Naomi. Change my name to Mara, which means bitter. That means I changed my name. Call me bitter because I went to Moab with a husband and two sons and I came back with nothing. So just call me bitter. So this was 
was a woman who was a sorrowful woman, but Ruth looked past her sorrow. Ruth looked past her brokenness. Ruth looked past the issues of her life. Oh God. And Ruth saw the treasure that was in her for her. Oh boy. My God, I tell you. Oh Lord. The reason why that book is in the Bible is because that book is in the Bible to tell you that if you're going to receive from anybody, you're going to look past for the treasure that's in them for you. Because the only person perfect is Jesus. Oh boy. Imperfect vessels have your treasure. I've got to preach this. Imperfect vessels have your treasure. Imperfect vessels have your link up. Imperfect vessels have your hook up. Jesus. Oh God. I said they have your hook up. Your hook up is in somebody who is imperfect. But if you look at the imperfections, you would forgo your hookup. If you look at the imperfections, you forgo your connection. If you look at your imperfections, you will forgo what God has planned for you. Oh, mama, mama, master. You got to understand this. You got to understand this. You got to understand that everybody is under construction or reconstruction. Oh boy, I tell you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody is either under construction or reconstruction. Hallelujah. How are you hearing what I'm saying? There's nobody that you meet that is the finished article. Nobody is the fit. God is always doing something new. God is always refining something. God is always restoring something. God is always building something into somebody. So don't have false expectation of perfection. Because it doesn't exist. Hallelujah. So learn to understand that God's treasure comes many times in brown paper bags. Oh my God. Oh, there was a brown paper bag called Naomi. That is why there are two books in the Bible named after women. One of them is called Ruth. Because Ruth was an amazing woman. Because what she did, she connected with Boaz. And Boaz connected her to the line of David, to the line of the Messiah. So this woman, through Naomi, was inducted into the line of the Messiah. Jesus, oh my God. Ooh, somebody's about to be connected to a royal line. Jesus. So I prophesy, I prophesy to you that you are somebody under the sound of my voice is about to be hooked up to a realm and a line that your parents know nothing about. Good Lord, Lord, Lord. You are about to step into a realm of favor. You are about to step into a realm of greatness that nobody in your family line has even seen it with a telescope. Shikata. Jesus. Oh Lord. But it's going to come through a what? A hookup. Somebody say a hookup. Somebody say, I will not miss my hookup. Oh Lord. And then I have one more prophecy for you. Oh glory be to God. One more prophecy. Oh let's now turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2. Mm. 2 Kings chapter 2. Oh Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 2, reading from verse 6. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on, and the fifty of the sons of the prophet went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Hallelujah. Then Elijah took the mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water 
waters and it was divided this way and that way so the two of them crossed over on dry land and it was when they crossed over that Elijah said ask what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you I've got to tell you something that God is also about to connect people with an Elisha Elijah connection you see Elijah has a mantle that you need Elijah has an anointing that you need Elijah has a realm of glory that you need and there is a divine connection between Elisha and Elijah and Elisha refused to disconnect from Elijah because when Elijah said leave he was actually testing him he was testing him to see whether he's worthy of that anointing it was a test because when they crossed over the Jordan he said tell me what do you want you have passed the test you've got to understand that Elijah Elisha connections are somebody who is higher in what you're called to do somebody that has a higher anointing than you somebody that has a greater influence than you that that person can release their influence release their mantle and lift you up to a higher place you see Elisha was the understudy and Elisha was Elijah was the master Elisha was the mister do it and I have got the t-shirt he had been it done it and he wore the t-shirt he was one of the greatest prophets that Israel ever knew and Elisha was his understudy and Elisha was only one of the understudies because there were other sons of the prophets the Bible says that there were 50 sons of sons of the prophets that looked on when Elijah went but those none of the 50 sons of the prophets followed Elijah the way Elisha did because Elisha was also a son of the prophet but this son of the prophet wanted that anointing that was on the master because he sensed that when the master leaves oh God you see you cannot get someone's mantle while they're alive but let me tell you that mantle was about to be what released because he was about to die and that mantle needed to be operated on the earth so Elisha was a spiritual understudy and Elijah was what a spiritual father so there was an anointing that was about to be released you see some of you God's about to connect you with someone that has an anointing on your life you see everybody needs an Elijah do you know that Jesus also had an Elijah because there was one called John the Baptist who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah because that very John the Baptist oh baptized Jesus and when he baptized Jesus the Bible says that the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove and the heaven opened unto him so there was an anointing upon John the Baptist that when he released it on Jesus the heavens opened do you realize that the heavens didn't open because Jesus prayed the heavens didn't open because Jesus fasted the heavens opened because a man by the name of John the Baptist baptized him and released an impartation into him you see you got to understand that there are impartations in the spirit that you've got to get and for you to get those impartations you've got to pass some tests uh, to see whether you are fair weather person whether you're going to follow your, your, your Elijah just when things are good uh, or whether you're going to follow your Elijah and cross the Jordan you see you got to understand if you're going to cross the Jordan with your Elijah you got to be a man of faith because a woman of faith because what happened Elijah stood in front of the Jordan the Jordan is like the Caribbean Sea it's a sea and he took the mantle and it's hit the sea and the sea split this way and split that way and you start walking in the center you're going to look right and left what happens if the water stops holding up what happens what happens if the water stops holding up and he walked through the water with his Elijah and walked to the other side. And when he walked to the other side, his Elijah asked him the question that he wanted to hear. It's what do you want me to do for you? And Elijah said, I want a double portion of your mantle. I don't just want your mantle. I want it double because I know something about God. Every generation must walk in higher anointing. I want to stand on your shoulders. I want to stand on your shoulders and reach even higher. Every generation walks what? With a higher anointing. Ooh. 
And the Bible says that Elijah said, you've asked for a hard thing. But nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken up, you shall get what you ask for. And the Bible says that as they were talking, the Bible says some chariots, that some angels when some chariots came and they took Elijah. You see, Elijah was one of the two men who never died. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? There's some men that walked with God and they never died. One was called Enoch the second was called Elijah and the other, the other one we don't even know what happened with him because we don't know where his body is God buried his body himself that's the guy called Moses but I'm talking to you about Elijah Elijah never died he was taken bodily into the spirit realm but when he was taken bodily from the realm of time into the realm of eternity the Bible says that that coat uh, fell off now what do you mean that coat that coat was called a mantle but it was symbolic of a spiritual covering a spiritual endowment a spiritual anointing that will rest upon him and the bible says uh, that elisha saw that mantle float down to the ground and when it floated down to the ground elisha did something he tore his own mantle he tore his own coat he's saying that anointing that i've walked in i don't need anymore i'm going to take my master's anointing and the bible says that he took that anointing he took that mantle and he walked up to the jordan and he took it and he struck the jordan and the bible says that the water split this way and the water split that way and he walked over and the Bible says that the sons of the prophets bow down before him because I've got to tell you he walked in a new anointing he walked in a new power what had never answered to him answered to him now what had never responded to him responded to him now because he had a new mantle a new anointing upon him that anointing didn't come because he fasted that anointing didn't come because he prayed that anointing anointing came because of what? A divine connection. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. So there are divine connections that God's going to bring to us. And the Lord said, release my angel. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. I have finished prophesying. Shaka papa vavavasa. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Share the prayer. Pray. In the name of Jesus, I ascend into the place of authority that you have given me, O oh God, Lord God of the holy prophets. And in the name of Jesus, as your voice instructed me, I now release the angels of divine connection to go into the lives of your people and bring unto them as they need it Isaac and Rebecca connections Elizabeth and Mary connections Naomi and Ruth connections Elisha and Elijah connections let the angels of God come and even with Abraham and Sarah connections bring and breathe something new into the relationship in the name of Jesus I release it now I release the angels of God to go to work right now I release the angels of God to go to work right now I release it in the name of Jesus Shatara Babasa Mandara Babasata Jesus La Prapa Bababasha Likata Bababasa That's it Yes, yes, yes Yes, the angels have been released The angels have been released Start giving God praise The angels have been released Angels have been released Angels have been released People's lives will change because of this meeting You're going to meet some people People's lives are going to change. Shabrai. And every demonic setup, every demonic relationship setup, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every demonic hookup, I cancel in the name of Jesus. Every demonic hookup, I cancel in the name of Jesus. Zena mama na mana shito. Ripa papa 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 shito. Manduru bushito de bere. Te de be 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 be